Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Intergrade. We uh, finished up the little intro area to Scarlet and now it's time for a more open area. Um, so yeah, you remember back when the remake first came out and a lot of people were trying to do the whole Final Fantasy VII's not political guys thing? Were people oh actually trying to do that? Because yes. they're fucking morons. Okay, so there's, there's a conversation in this section of the game that blatantly says no, it's entirely political, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling me this game where power company is the bad guy and the planet's literally dying because of overusing its resources is political? When people say that they don't want a story to be political, what they, what they mean is that they don't want to see politi politics in it that they don't agree with. Uh, yeah, One thousand percent is what they what they mean. <laughs> uh, I mean. Like, this is Final Fantasy VII is one of those games that comes out like immediately and right away with an obvious um, political uh, leaning. So, why people tried to argue against the game being political at all, I'll never get. But, you I know. Uh, I guess it, it uh, my guess is mostly just that they didn't want people to talk about it really they just wanted people to shut up and let me um, talk but, about my video game you know but you know the punchline is that they wound up getting hung hung up on the most banal stuff that didn't actually matter at all like a character design here or what what was the other thing that uh, there's another thing that i remember people talking about other than tifa what was it i um, think it um do you know the meme of the of there's the transformer robot and the guy is looking at the robot and he's like whoa cool robot and then the gun is shooting over his head the words war is bad and people will mess with that template a whole lot i feel like yeah. it's a lot of that where if you're not looking at it closely, you don't get it, or you don't notice it, and I feel like that's an awful lot of things too. People don't like it as much if you know they have to if they if they can get it. I guess is. The I don't want to think when I'm consuming my media. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like I feel like a lot of people didn't get, for example, that um, Bioshock is very anti-libertarian and anti and Rand in particular. And when you think about it, it's not really all that subtle about it either. Um, it's the bad, the bad guy's name is Atlas. <laughs> for, for fuck's it, sake. It, it, one guy's name is Atlas, and the other guy's name is like... He's an anagram of, of Ayn Rand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, it's the bad, and it's the bad guy, too, that you're supposed to not agree with. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, there's... Uh, but, you know, still, people do miss these these things and so that's what bothers that will end up bothering them versus you know if they don't get it then it doesn't matter if their politics agree with it or not they're like oh you're pushing politics in my game it's like no every game if you want to think about it really like in a really big way and maybe this sounds slightly facetious all art is personal on some level yeah like oh super mario brothers supports the monarchy like it sounds facetious when you word it like that, but it, technically it is true. So, you know. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know about, I don't know if I would go not, that not far. Not really like that, but like the story, you can interpret art in pretty much any way. Um, yeah. But any like, way you want. That's part of why it's interesting. But like, <laughs> it, it, there, there is a difference between allegory and applicability, you know? Yes. Not um, every, like, obviously, you know, some arguments are going to have more merit than others, but that's what's the fun part about discussing art and stuff like that is like what you know seeing those arguments and seeing how they interact like not all discussion needs to be confrontational you know oh this is a oh. banging track for the record like that's <laughs> it's the it's a skater guy <laughs> he said, we, we said see you later boy uh, I was just <laughs> thinking about that song <laughs> I feel you know, old uh, Avril Lavigne <laughs> is just a, a writing genius. Liming, 
He said, see you later, boy, with Skater Boy. Rhyming boy with boy. That's just like <laughs> perfect writing. I just, I, Avril Lavigne is great, <laughs> but, you know. Anyway, uh, there is a conversation to be had about, like, a story that pushes its message too hard, but, like, that's not the conversation any of these people are trying to have, so yeah. I just, it's like, you know. Yeah, oftentimes be... trying to meet them and actually argue their point is bringing them to a level that they're not even trying to be at, <laughs> so. Yeah. But anyway, um, with that said, Final Fantasy VII has always been a political game, um, and if you think otherwise, then you didn't pay enough attention. Um, and then it's immediate contemporary Xeno Gears went even further. <laughs> um, so I don't know much about the politics of Xeno Gears. I know that it's like extremely psych psychological and like it's very it, it's like yes, it's very dense. It's also like one of those games where they got too ambitious and and couldn't really match that with managing their time. So the first half is really good. And the second half kind of falls apart in the pacing department, like a Xeno a lot. game falling apart in the second half. I'm shocked, shocked, not that shocked. <laughs> well, that series is kind of cursed, you know, because like they finally had a five series game to make their their a five game series to make like their dream story, and then the first game doesn't sell well enough for Namco, so Namco's like, it has to be three games now. We'll let you finish, but it's gonna be three. So their five game plan had to be squeezed down to three games, and their answer to that was to basically make the second game a, a really fast paced montage through what they had planned, <laughs> so that the third game could be p paced properly again. <laughs> so um, um, that that reminds me a lot of. Ace Attorney, Great Ace Attorney. Um, uh, that game just came out on uh, Switch in the States, finally. Um, and I remember the games are really long, like 60 hours, which is like a good 30 hours longer than every other Ace Attorney game. Um, and I was like, man, this story's so long, but even still, like... It feels like they didn't have enough, and it turns out, <laughs> oh, they didn't want two games. They wanted three. Um, and the first game didn't sell well enough, and so Shoot Takumi had to stuff two games into the second. <laughs> second yeah. Uh, so it's like, uh, that that always sucks, but I mean, if... Like, speaking from a business Wait. perspective, you can't... There's only there's only so much you can do if the game One stuff, of so. Yuffie's attacks is Prop Shredder from Devil May Cry. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Where she shoves her weapon forward and spins it like a saw blade. Yeah. It's one of those things Dante is well, is well known for, move, move set wise. Yeah, it's like the first Sword Master move you get in Devil May Cry 3. Wow. Is this the only uh -uh. time they play the normal battle theme in um, I think this? so. Also, it's. I know that they have this mini game in the main game too, but it's neat seeing like actual like Shinra boxes for it um, versus like they had crates in the original version, which is just really yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh. Also, oh, they've also got like little like the weapon icons from the old final. Oh, that's neat. That's cute. I love when when games do that kind of stuff. I like to think that the kids got the idea from Shinra possibly <laughs> i like the 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 way this this uh dlc handles uh environment navigation it's a lot more dynamic the uh original well, they, they, they took advantage of that yuffie's a ninja and that's way more acrobatic than the other party members yeah i i really like the running on walls uh and climbing up stuff there was the section earlier in the game where you had to like hit things to turn them around and stuff and that all seemed really cool i liked all that a lot well, it's like they were already pushing that in the base game, but they had to keep it to what, like, Cloud could, you know, believably do without going full Advent children. Um, oh, I think this is when we're having the <laughs> conversation about it. It's entirely political assholes. <laughs> and now we're all reading it. <laughs> so Sonon fought in the... Um, he fought in the war, yes. He fought in the war. Was he... He was on the Midgar side, right? No, he's Wutai. He's Wutai? Oh, okay. Yes, free elections, workers' rights, free distribution of wealth. <laughs> and when you look at the world, what is it that 
It's like, hmm. <laughs> It's entirely political shitheads. <laughs> what? Politics in my JRPG. It's more likely I like that, than you think. I like I like that that conversation was brought up because like it's it's good to note that Yuffie and Sonon and the Wutaians are coming at this from a completely different perspective than Avalanche are. Because Avalanche are like a rebellion that arose from within the system. Whereas Wutai is the other country that, you know, lost a war. <laughs> so their, 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 their emotional stake is, like, way different. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, like, they, they both don't like Shinra, but they like... <laughs> the stupid nuts. Every time I hear that, I think that there's something going wrong with my, my headphones. <laughs> I like how Yuffie and Sonon get to bond over nuts in a totally uh, platonic nuts. way. <laughs> You're ninjas, just jump across. Believe it. It's not, I mean, for, for ninjas, that's not that far for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So away we go. It's a good thing it didn't bounce, huh, Sonon? That would have sucked. Yes. <laughs> I do think that this is a Naruto good run. <laughs> length, too, for the game. Like, I, I, it definitely plays longer. Feels longer when you're playing it, I'm sure, because... Also, again, New Game Plus, I'm plowing through things faster. Yeah, but I feel like they're doing a really good job at not um, overstaying their welcome. Uh, well, I mean, as a standard DLC side episode, it's about standard length, I suppose. That's a good word to yeah. Me. Like, it doesn't last much longer than, say, Lair of the Shadow Broker in Mass Effect 2. Um, um, it's not really an RPG, but one of my only other comparisons I can think of is um, um, Breath of the Wild's DLC felt about this long. And seems about right for this sort of thing. Yeah, it's usually somewhere between four to eight hours, depending on what game you're talking about. Oh, need to use up, need to use up, need to use up all my potions because I have no use for them otherwise. I mean, I do this in um, Final Fantasy games all the time. It's just one of the cool things about the old Final Fantasy games is that like it's like frame perfect menuing. So like you basically just feed people potions as fast as you can mash the buttons. Um, yep. Versus here, you have to watch <laughs> Yuffie stuff each one into her mouth individually. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, it's more like she tosses it up in the air and it just sparkles around her. So kind of like she would she was using it in battle. But oh, oh wait, battle and and the field are the same thing now because it's twenty twenty one. Oops. Look, an evil villain chamber. Didn't this room blow up? I thought this room blew up. Da, 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 I'm reminded da, da. of being Leon. Oh, in, in I, I love Evil that she sits in the chair. <laughs> I'm reminded of being Leon in Resident Evil 4. I think you have the option to sit in the chair. And he says there's no time for this. <laughs> well, he does it anyway. No, my point I mean, my scene of reference is always at the end of God of War 1 where Kratos just ends with sitting in the chair looking all Of miffed. course, my favorite similar option is in Resident Evil 6, where you can sit on the um, on the little squeaky, wobbly park animal thing. Uh, and Chris, wait, what? <laughs> when you're playing as Chris Redfield, I think I think it's as Chris. It might be as other characters because they all go through China at some point. Now that I think about it, um, there's a there's a play park with like. There's little animal-shaped rides that you rock back and forth on, whatever Wait, they're called. Wait, and Chris can get... Do the other soldiers, like, call him um, out for being a I dumbass? <laughs> I don't know. I uh, think you're alone except for, for the second player at this point. But but Chris, like, sits on it, rocks on it a bit, then turns to the side, crosses his leg, strikes a pose. The only thing I think about <laughs> when I think of those anymore is... um. 
Patrick Star on the little ducky thing, but they just propose <laughs> it over Fly Me to the Moon from the end from the Evangelion credits. Okay, uh, thinking about it, Chris Redfield is a giant of a man. Probably weighs like three hundred pounds of pure muscle. Um and six foot seven or something like that. He would crush the poor thing. He just he gets up and it's all smushed and the next kid to come on and the next day would cry. Oh Damn, no, Chris, you're things, an asshole. The- those things have to be able to hold adults because sometimes adults ride them with their kids, you know. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Um... Oh my! Ah. <laughs> oh, uh, these these look like custom robo dolls. Um, that's a game I would love to play one day as custom robo. But um... sadly, it's a GameCube game, and Nintendo will never re-release this. Hold on, let's take a quick look here to the wonderful to world of the internet. Um, and see how much a copy of Custom Robo costs. Is it over or under Path of Radiance? Uh, almost certainly under, uh, because Path of Radiance is like, what, 180 these days? Something like that. Oh yeah, um, only $50. Uh, no, that's not, that's not bad. Uh, the DS game is like 50 or 60. Okay. Like, that's, okay, that's reasonable. Uh, I mean, you guys are going on about, what, Custom Robo or whatever, and I'm just thinking... Uh, what's that PlayStation game with the robots that you build? The mech suits that you drive? Uh, 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 it was on all the demo discs. <laughs> I don't remember. Alright, okay. Quiz time. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Just the case in the manual. Oh, no, it's not even just the, the, the manual, just the case uh, for it. How much uh, do you think they're charging for just the case of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance? $80. Oh, Ryan's right. On the, right on the money, $80. $80. Cool. Do I get, do I get, the, do I get $1,000 and get to go to Showcase? No. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah, if you're, uh, it's looking like it's about 180 to 200 dollars for Path of Radiance. Please remake that game, Intelligent Systems. Um, please. Armored Core, hope. that's the one. <laughs> Armored Core. Okay, there you go. Uh, you want to know what I, who I feel bad for, is the person in the comment section who was like, I know the game Lewis is talking about, and they posted the comment before. They got to Getting this to this part in the video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, intelligent. We know systems. you. We know you exist down there. Oh, I've done yeah. it before. I've absolutely commented before the video uh, explains that my comment is actually irrelevant. Fancy hologram. Your boobs look even bigger now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Scarlet's a fun villain in this. Like, <laughs> they play up her being sadistic, which I think is a fun play. Whereas she was just kind of cranky in the original, from what I remember. Cranky and catty, yeah. Yeah. Um, they, prob- they probably, like, portrayed her in this way before this, like in the Turks game or whatever. But, you know, it, it really works here. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to know. There's so much Final Fantasy VII stuff. Like, it's hard to have a good sense of everything. You know? Yeah. Because uh, there was, what, uh, Crisis Core? She's probably not in Crisis Core. Um, no, nah, I don't think any of the... Um, I don't think any of them showed up in Crisis Core. There was uh, a different... The only one who reasonably could would be Heidegger. Uh, I didn't see Heidegger, but there was a no, different... I'm, I'm, just, um, I'm, just saying re- I'm just saying storyline-wise, he's probably the only one who could even be there. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess there's more reason to put Reeve in stuff because he's a part of the party. So there's more reason for them to want to write him into things, you know, versus just random NPCs. Yeah, but he was mo- he was mostly shown in Dirge of Cerberus. Um, well, that's a sequel, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the only game that I remember him featuring prominently in. Though is that still canon? Yes. I mean, technically, because of characters we'll see next part. <laughs> oh, boy. Here it comes. <laughs>